What's going on guys? Welcome back to yet another episode. Um, kind of wanted to give you guys an update on everything going on here at the facility. Uh, also wanted to show you guys the new Vista because I was not able to show him the last time we filmed because he was digesting a nice big meal. But you just knew back in your house, aren't you? Take away. So with all of the snakes growing a little faster than expected, uh, we are going to have to upgrade a lot of cages here soon. Um, so we are going to do some changes in here as well as get some more vision cages for the big snake room. Uh, everything's kind of a hot mess right now because we are building stuff to actually bring to Aquashella, which is at the end of this month. Um, we're actually leaving in kind of about a week from today. Um, but if you guys come over here, you can see I actually built some Vivariums in vision cages just for vision itself. Um, so these will be for sale at the show. So coming in here into the tree viper room, not much has changed. Um, again, I did get all these bottom cages done, but because I've been so busy building other people's cages, I haven't even had time to think about doing the top ones up here. Um, so I did kind of start a business selling vivariums and paludariums and things like that. I have a lot of traveling coming up. Um, to go and build people paludariums, uh, which will be all on the secondary channel, not on this main channel here. Um, but yeah, so everything's coming in pretty good. I'm gonna do an update on this enclosure here soon. Uh, as for the giant vision cage, the 734, I believe. Um, so I was gonna get a pair of big adult West African green mambas, and I was gonna build this out as a giant vivarium for them and try and breed them. Um, it was actually me and Ryan that I was gonna get a female, he was gonna get a male, and we were gonna try to breed them out, but apparently both of them ended up dying. So, I think that's pretty much a little update in here, but I'm sure you guys would like to see the new foxes and kind of everything else going out, but I wanna show you one more thing that I just remembered, so come over here. I'm also gonna be selling these two smaller vision cages, um, the little nano vivariums uh, at the show as well in Dallas. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys go to the Dallas show if you're in that area and you would like to purchase these. All right guys, so coming outside, I mean, this has been a constant battle out here. Um, we're still working on finishing the fox cage, but now that the price of wood has gone down, we're gonna be able to continue building the giant fox cage, summer's dream fox cage, as I like to say. Um, all the crocodilians are all kind of locked up in a little thing I built, which again will also be on the second channel. We did knock down the horse stall. We're still working on so much stuff. For USDA, we have to have a six foot fence all the way around the property where the animals are being kept. So we're about halfway done with that. Fencing materials is not cheap. We are doing it ourselves. Um, the amount of scrap metal as well that we have collected in this yard from the people before us has been a lot. That's the best way I can put it. Um, but the other foxes that we did just get, they're acclimating really, really well. They're over here. Actually, you can see the male. One of them's on top of the house right there. Um, so they are on the opposite side of the property as our foxes because they still are not vaccinated. We're having a little difficulty with the vet, um, which we will be actually making phone calls later today to be able to possibly get a different vet to get it done sooner. It's a whole, whole hot mess, pretty much. Um, as for the giant shed, or building where I wanted to put the snakes originally that is still initially a goal to get a giant steel building for all of the giant um, reptiles and also all the venomous snakes, kind of like a big herp house. Um, and then all the crocodilian pits and stuff like that will all be over there. So there's still a lot of room here, a lot of um, space to take up for cages and things like that. So it's a long process. We are doing our best to get as much done as we possibly can. So right here, I kind of, I figured I'll show you guys where I want some of the cages to be. So right here, this is actually going to be a relatively large skunk cage. So just in case we ever do rescue another skunk, we still do have Oreo. He's doing great. He's come a little bit of a chunker, but it's okay. He's getting ready for winter. Um, but right here, we're going to do a giant, I think we decided on doing um, 12 by 10 foot skunk cage. It's also going to be 10 foot high. We're going to give him lots of stuff to climb up on if he wants to. And I actually was thinking about doing like a universal rock background, making some big fake tree stumps for him to kind of hide in if he wants. So this is pretty much where the skunk cage is gonna be. Behind you guys over here is where we're actually thinking about doing or where we're going to do the tortoise enclosure. Now I have people left and right asking me to take their sulcata tortoises. So most places have a lot of sulcatas um, on display. We're probably gonna have a, 
I want to say no more than six. I hope no more than six. Summer's eyes just roll to the back of her head. Um, but the <laughs> the tortoise enclosure is actually going to be, that tree is going to be the corner of it. It's going to come all the way around this giant patch of trees here, so they have plenty of shade if they want. Um, I'm actually going to be scraping up all of this uh, rock you see here on the floor and putting that as the base floor of that so that it kind of gives them a nice rocky bottom to scratch their bellies on or whatever they want. As you can see, Squirtle is growing. This little boy, well, he's not really little anymore. Um, he's grown quite a bit. Uh, we actually weighed him the other day. He's gained about 20 pounds since he's been with us. He's doing really great. Um, his enclosure, don't bite yourself, don't bite yourself, don't bite yourself, don't bite yourself. Don't bite yourself. Please don't bite yourself. It's just your foot. You're okay. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's gonna hurt. Why do you do that every time? Anyway, so his enclosure is I'm trying to design it. It's gonna be a little tricky. Don't you're gonna bite your other foot now too? Why? <laughs> I want everybody to be able to see him underwater, so it's gonna take some glass, good filtration to make sure his pond stays nice and clean. Don't bite yourself. You're, you're so weird. Only Squirtle. But yeah, him as well as the other common snapping turtle, we have her over there as well. All the crocodilians. I want to be able to see them underwater. Would you? Okay, that's it. You're going back. I don't want you to keep biting yourself. But I want you to be able to see them underwater um, so you can kind of see how they swim, how they chill, how they relax. Somebody that you guys haven't seen in a while, Chomper. Look how big he's got. Look at this little guy. He's not little anymore. So when we got him, he was about the size of his tail. So he's the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. We've had him for, what, three years now, I want to say? So quite some time, actually. Brian's been working a lot with him to tame him down. I don't know how well he's uh, been working with him lately, but uh, I'm not going to put that to the test. But yeah, look at this guy. So he's going to be an awesome display animal, and I'm really excited for him to get bigger. So one of the next biggest projects we have to do is actually, as much as I don't want to, but we have to take down some of these bigger trees um, because of the sheds and things like that we're going to be getting. Also, I need to take down the big Australian pine to complete the six foot fence on the back half um, of where the animals are going to be pretty much because I don't want to have to finish the fence, then cut the tree down, it falls and breaks the fence. That would be a whole other pain in the butt I don't want to deal with. So unfortunately, a lot of these trees are going to be coming down, but we are going to plant new smaller trees kind of in locations that we want on the property. So we still do have a lot of trees here. All right, so the baby mamas are doing pretty good. They do have a little bit longer in quarantine before they actually come out. Again, these are not mine. These are for somebody else. That's the female. Oh, no, you dropped it. Jeez. <laughs> so it's really hard to film them here in the bathroom because the lighting isn't the best, but once we do get them out of here um, and into a cage, we'll definitely film a feeding with them. Now guys, before I forget, I did want to tell you too, I did put the Bothrops to porous in a little three foot vision and right away I got them to lock up. I'm really excited because again, these are the only ones in a personal collection here in the United States. So if I get these guys to produce some babies for me, Oh, that'll make me a one happy camper. All right, guys, so I did want to give you a quick little update on everything kind of going on. We're still waiting for a bunch more baby rattlesnakes to be born. Uh, I mean, there's, there's constantly things going on. I'm still building another cage for the show as well. So remember, subscribe if you are not already. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Big thank you to my Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.